just waiting for a visual confirmation so that I can see. So I'm there. I can see myself live. So good evening, everybody. This is a session on fatty acid synthesis. So we'll discuss fatty acid synthesis and we will you know look at the regulation of fatty acid synthesis and how all these YouTube sessions are structured. We will start looking with some of the questions from fatty acid synthesis and once we have looked at those questions we will go ahead and you know look at the theory of this particular topic so for anyone who is tuning in for the first time i'm dr abhishek your mentor for biochemistry and uh, you know i've been teaching biochemistry for almost 12 years i'm also the author of biochemistry basics flashcard which you can buy on amazon hi achkan khan good evening so anyone joining in for the first time make sure that you subscribe to this channel because not only me, there are more than 50 different educators who come live every month on this channel. Also, you know, hit the bell icon so that whenever we go live, you get a notification and you can, you know, always attend these classes. If you have attended any one of my earlier sessions, give this video a thumbs up. It means a lot. It will help this video, you know, reach many students. Today only I was uh, seeing a, you know, comment from one of the students that, you know, they cannot afford premium subscription of uh, a lot of these apps okay so i understand but i know this simple act of you giving a thumbs up or sharing these free content will go to them and they can learn it you know so this is very very important it doesn't take a lot of time just give this video a thumbs up so before we start a few announcements from an academy end so we have just started a professional second year batch the idea is that we were getting a lot of second year students who wanted us to teach us second year syllabus because you know the colleges are closed closed and not many teachers are very good uh, you know even at a college level so all the top teachers dr minakshi dr vishwaji dinesh and Preeti, all of them are a part of the second year batch they will ensure that you know your second year syllabus is completed as well as you are absolutely you know uh, you know on the way to prepare for your next pg examination plus these sessions will not only have the theory sessions they will have a lot of practical you know they will demonstrate all the practical points also and on the same pattern we have started a third year batch where dr rama dr vaishnavi dr sudha will be taking your pnc P, uh, psm ent and ofta again the idea is to make sure that you are very well versed with your third year syllabus and your pg instance examination hi vasim good evening so uh Two more batches. One is for FMG. We have some excellent result on FMG. You know, many students cracked their FMG examination within the first attempt. And uh, so there is a test and analysis batch for that. And anyone who is going to appear for next year next, there is a batch for that. And uh, this is a batch for, you know, uh, second, uh, you know, anyone who was planning to appear for NEET PG this year. But because NEET PG has been postponed. So we don't want you to be derailed. We want you to be continuing practicing and learning so that, you know, uh, this gap don't end up wasting so this is a season one need pg 2021 image based revision batch so make sure you are a part of this batch and look an academy uh, provides you everything which a physical coaching will provide but with a lot of more advantages like you can attend these sessions at the you know uh, at the convenience of your home if you miss some session you can see a recorded session and at a very very affordable price okay so let's start with uh, Thank you, Achkan. So let's start with today's session that is fatty acid synthesis. So I'm going to take you through the complete concept, but let's look at some of the questions which has already come on fatty acid synthesis. So this is the first question, a rate limiting step in fatty acid synthesis is. So which is of the following is the rate limiting step of fatty acid synthesis? Is it production of acetyl-CoA? Is it production of oxaloacetate? Is it production of melanoyl-CoA? And is it production of citrate? So what will be the answer? rate limiting step of fatty acid synthesis and don't worry once i have shown you around 10 12 questions which have come on this topic i will take you through the entire theory so that you are conceptually also clear can anyone answer this question a rate limiting step of fatty acid synthesis is so production of acetyl coa dilma varsant wasim everyone is saying production of acetyl coa anyone else wants to answer this question all of you are wrong. Production of acetyl CoA is not the rate limiting step. Anyone wants to take another guess? Okay. So remember, Achkan is saying B production of uh, you know oxaloacetate. No. The correct answer is C. The correct answer here is C production of malinoyl CoA. So what happens? Acetyl CoA, okay, acetyl CoA will 
you know a carbon will be added to acetyl coa so it's called as carbon fixation uh, i have a power cut here so maybe you know it will be a little dark so acetyl coa plus malanoyl coa will get converted into malanoyl coa so just give me a few minutes the power will come back i think the net will be continuing to running okay so i think that my power is back so the correct answer is c here let's answer this question which of the following enzyme is a not a component of fatty acid synthase complex okay so rohan uh, anil tina parik all of you are correct it is the correct answer was c let's answer this question which of the following enzyme is not a component of fatty acid synthase complex so so parik says a acetyl coa carboxylase Akshaya says C, enoyl reductase. Anyone else? Anyone else wants to answer this question? Sweta Patil, hi Sweta. Sweta Patil says A. Parth says A. Rohan says C. So the correct answer is acetyl coa carboxylase. Acetyl coa carboxylase is not a part of the complex. It is an independent enzyme. And once this malanoyl coa is formed, that is taken to the fatty acid synthase complex. So we will learn about this fatty acid synthase complex, all the enzymes in detail. I'll show you after all the session, all the questions I have shown. Let's answer this question. Building block of fatty acid biosynthesis is. So what is the building block of fatty acid biosynthesis? Is it NADH? Is it acyl CoA? Is it acetyl CoA? Or is it acetyl CoA? What is the building block of fatty acid? So, what is the building block of uh, fatty acid biosynthesis? So, Tina is saying B. Parik is saying B. Anyone else? Just one minute. Yeah. Amar is also saying B. <clears throat> now remember, what is the difference between acyl CoA and acetyl CoA? Hope all of you know. Mitali is also going for B. Kennedy has got this question correct. The correct answer is C, acetyl CoA. So we are going to see what is the difference between acyl CoA and acetyl CoA. This is a two carbon moiety. And this acyl can be anything, two carbon, five carbon, seven carbon. So that is an acyl group. Number of carbon is not uh, fixed. Okay. So the correct answer here is acetyl CoA. So all the fatty acid will be built from a two carbon moiety. We will see this fatty acid synthesis in detail. Let's answer this question. Free fatty acids are transported by. So which, which molecule transports free fatty acid? Is it ceruloplasmin? Is it prealbumin? Is it albumin or is it transthyrin? So what transports free as free fatty acids? So this everyone is getting correct. Very good, Roshan. Very good, Tina. Very good, Dilma. Everyone is correct in this question. The correct answer is albumin. And this is the reason why free fatty acid, because it is transported by albumin, this complex cannot tra be transported, cannot cross blood brain barrier. Okay. And that is why brain is not able to get this free fatty acid. Excellent. Let's answer this question. Releasing agent used in lipogenesis. Lipogenesis is another name for fatty acid synthesis. Fatty acid synthesis is also called as lipogenesis so which of the following is the reducing agent what do i mean by reducing agent anything which will add hydrogen anything which will add hydrogen or donor of hydrogen donor of hydrogen so which is the reducing agent how it is derived very good was akshaya says a pentose phosphate pathway in atp excellent so all of you are correct the correct answer is pentose phosphate pathway and what we have is NADPH plus H. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Let's answer this question. In fatty acid, fatty liver. So these are the actual questions which have come on this topic in past four or five years. Okay. Now I know that now there is a more trend towards clinical question, but this was earlier which was coming. One liner questions in NEET PG, FMG examination or NB examination. In fatty liver, which lipid accumulates? So what is that that will accumulate in fatty acid? So 
So Tina is saying B, Rohan is saying B, Ramesh is saying B, everyone is saying B. So the correct answer is B, triglycerides. Very good. Because free fatty acid cannot be stored like this. What happens is if you see free fatty acid, it has a functional group CWH. Now this is a very reactive functional group, one of the most reactive organic groups. Okay. So if it has to be stored, it has to be, you know, neutralized by an alcohol and form an ester. Okay. So this is what happens. This is what happens. So what happens is free fatty acid, three molecules of free fatty acid will combine with glycerol. Okay. Glycerol has three OH group and this will form triacylglycerol, also called as triglycerides. So the correct answer is B. Excellent. Let's answer this question. Now this is not exactly from fatty acid, but this is uh, you know, very important. In a well-fed state, acetyl-CoA formed from diet is least used in synthesis of acetyl-CoA which is you know derived from diet will not go into synthesis of what so what will not be formed from this acetyl coa anyone so this is a little tricky question let's see who answers this question in a well fed state acetyl coa obtained from diet is least used in synthesis of so rohan is going for c wasim is saying a parik c megha c meg c Achkan is saying A. So there is an equal split between A and C and I can understand why. So first rule out these two. Very easily we can rule out. The first is citrate. So citrate is increasingly formed in well-fed state. In well-fed state, this acetyl-CoA can either go into Krebs cycle. There also citrate will be formed and it can go into fatty acid synthesis. There also citrate will be formed. So in well-fed state, acetyl-CoA can easily form citrate. So this is ruled out. Let's talk about oxaloacetaminate. Now this is an anabolic pathway. Okay, so in anabolic pathway for synthesis of amino acid. We are going to learn that in amino acid. So even amino acid formation can happen from acetyl-CoA. So this again can be ruled out. Now the only two options are acetoacetate. That is a ketone body. Okay, and palmitoyl-CoA. That is fatty acid-CoA. Now, we know that ketone bodies can never be formed in well-fed state. Ketone bodies can never be formed in well-fed state. So this is the correct answer. And remember, when we talk about this ketone bodies, obviously it is going to be made from acetyl-CoA. But this acetyl-CoA never comes from the diet. Where does this acetyl-CoA come from? Can anyone tell me? Where does this acetyl-CoA, which is required in ketone body synthesis, comes from? The correct answer is it comes from fatty, free fatty acid beta oxidation. All the free fatty acid which were restored, whenever blood glucose goes come down, they are broken down into acetyl-CoA. And this acetyl-CoA, which is in the mitochondria, will be used for ketone bodies. So, both the ways, this is the correct answer. Now, for a minute, let's look at palmitoyl-CoA. Okay. Now, this fatty acid-CoA, remember, whenever free fatty acid is going to be converted into triacylglycerol, this free fatty acid first has to be activated. And how it is activated? By converting into free you know, fatty acid CoA. So this palmitoyl CoA is formed both when this free fatty acid is going to be forming tricylglycerol or when this tricylglycerol is broken into free fatty acid and it has to go for oxidation. So this is formed in both the plant. So palmitoyl CoA can be formed when this free fatty acid has to be stored as triglyceride. So the A is also possible. The only not possible is C. Let's look at this question. Pan acid site of fatty acid synthase complex except pan acid site of fatty acid synthase complex except. Golu bilkul hindi bol sakte hai, but bohot log ko hindi nahi samaj mein aegi. Isle I try to, no, I'll try to speak a little slower if you have any difficulty. In fact, Golu, I English not speak English when I was in medical college. Mein gaya tha, I could not speak English. Okay, thanks to medical college, I had English mein tha, to learn gaya. So, pan is a site of fatty acid synthase complex except acetyl-CoA, malinoyl-CoA, propanyl-CoA, yeah, all. So, Parth is saying B. Achkan, uh, Khan is saying D, Rawson is saying D, everyone is saying D, okay. So all of you are wrong. The correct answer is malin. So propanyl-CoA never goes in pan acid site. It never takes place. So this is ruled out, this is ruled out. Now, frankly speaking, both of these are accepted on pan acid site. 
but acetyl CoA is accepted only on the first cycle and melanoyl CoA is always accepted. Okay, so the best option will be B. Acetyl CoA, we will see when we are going to see the fatty acid synthesis when I have discussed all these questions that melanoyl CoA in all the cycles, acetyl CoA only in the first cycle. So the correct answer here will be B, not B because propionyl CoA is never accepted at pan acid site. Okay, let's answer this question. All participate in fatty acid synthesis except okay all except fatty don't worry i'll explain everything i'll explain you the entire fatty acid synthesis once i we discuss all these questions all participate in fatty acid synthesis except hydratase reductase transacylase or dehydrogenase so akshaya is saying a dilma is saying a hi sweta sweta is saying d dehydrogenase Anyone else wants to answer this question? Vanishka is also saying D. Parikh is also saying D. So all of you are correct. Okay, the correct answer is dehydrogenase. Okay, remember for fatty acid synthesis, we are adding hydrogen. Okay, we are not removing hydrogen. Okay, we never remove hydrogen. So the correct answer is dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase will not be a part of fatty acid synthesis. Dehydrogenase will be a part of the breakdown of fatty acid synthesis so even if you know that concept you will be able to answer this question excellent so carbon atoms added in fatty acid synthesis is how many carbon atoms are added in each of the cycle carbon atoms added in fatty acid synthesis is two in the first cycle four in the second cycle four in the first cycle two in the second cycle two in the first cycle two in the second cycle a four in the first cycle, four in the second cycle. So Parth is saying B, four in the first cycle, four in the second cycle. Anyone else? Anyone else want to answer this question? So B, Sweta is saying for B. So Sweta is correct. The correct answer is actually 4 in the first cycle and 2 in the. So what happens? 4 carbon is added in the first cycle. After that, every time it will be 2 carbon. After that, every time it will be 2 carbon. Remember this. Okay. So the first cycle only we will see. And when we are when I'm going to teach you the theory, just after these questions, we'll see that the first cycle, 4 carbons. After that, every cycle, 2 carbons. Okay. Excellent. This is probably the last question. In fatty acid synthesis, carbon dioxide loss occurs in which step? So, which step carbon dioxide is, you know, lost? Hydration, dehydration, condensation or reduction step. Which step does there is a loss of carbon dioxide? Tina is saying C, condensation step. Anyone else? Tina is, Sweta is also saying C. Akshaya C, excellent. So, all of you are correct. The correct answer is condensation reaction. Excellent. Which biochemical reaction does not occur in mitochondria? Which biochemical reaction does not occur in mitochondria? Krebs cycle, urea cycle, gluconeogenesis, and fatty acid synthesis. So, the correct answer is D. Fatty acid synthesis is a completely cytoplasmic completely cytoplasmic process so i'll just hear a little about plus subscription anyone who is wanting to join plus subscription remember you can join our simple plus program or our iconic program and these are the packs which are available currently you can go for any emi option and if you use this discount code dr abhishek 10 okay you will get a 10 percent off 10 percent additional off this is for anyone who wants to appear for this year need pg 3 plus 1 offer it's very generous offer you can go for that okay we have a very high quality q bank in terms of latest clinical questions which may be very relevant to you and uh, you know you can choose a plus or an iconic on an academy app and you can get a 10 percent off okay so let's start with de novo fatty synthesis let's start with the theory okay so Zanib, it's, it still will be mild COVID only if the SpO2 is more than 98, but we will also require to know the year. 
okay so so that i wanted to mix ye maybe from next time i'll just have mcqs only okay so let's look at de novo fatty synthesis remember it is um, you know uh, also called as feder line or line spiral pathway it happens in liver kidney brain lung lactating membrane and adipose tissue primarily a cytoplasmic process and acetyl coa is a building block and the cofactor requirement also there has been a lot of questions nadph atp magnesium biotin and bicarbonate okay and it happens in three steps so these are the three steps of fatty acid synthesis first acetyl coa is transported from mitochondria to cytoplasm now as i told you whenever we are talking about you know fatty acid synthesis that acetyl coa comes from diet okay that acetyl coa comes from diet so what happens we know glucose will come from diet it will be converted into pyruvate and this pyruvate via link reaction will be converted into acetyl coa once this acetyl coa gets into the mitochondria it will then decide based on the energy status of the cell if the cell is in energy rich state this will go for fatty acid synthesis and if the cell is in energy poor state this will go into the krebs cycle to produce more energy is this clear so this is a mitochondrial acetyl coa now this mitochondrial acetyl coa remember it comes from diet not from the breakdown of fatty acids okay and this acetyl coa if the cell is in energy rich state has decided to go into fatty acid synthesis but remember we have just seen that fatty acid synthesis primarily happens in cytoplasm this is sitting in the mitochondria so it has to be transported to the cytoplasm so this is the first step the transport of acetyl coa from mitochondria to cytoplasm then what happens this acetyl coa is charged up because it is going to be in an anabolic pathway so how does we charge any organic molecule by adding any carbon or any phosphate or any coa these are the common mechanisms why we charge up any particular organic molecule so here the mechanism is by addition of a carbon so acetyl coa is converted into malonyl coa and the last is this malonyl coa will enter into fatty acid synthase complex to you know synthesize fat so this is the first step you know how acetyl coa gets into the cytoplasm so i have told you suppose this acetyl coa okay sees that the cell is in energy rich state so it cannot it does not want to go into krebs cycle so what happens and this acetyl coa cannot come out of directly because both these membranes will not allow it to come out so what happens this acetyl coa combines with oxaloacetate to form citrate okay and remember this citrate can go into krebs cycle also okay but if the cell is in energy rich state this citrate comes out into the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm again it will break down into acetyl coa and oxaloacetate now here very very important point very important point don't forget this a high level of citrate in the cytoplasm a high level of citrate in the cytoplasm indicates that the cell is in energy rich state the cell is in energy rich state which means there is a lot of energy that's why this citrate came out from the mitochondria into the cytoplasm otherwise this citrate would have gone into the krebs cycle it would not have come into the cytoplasm is this point clear is this point clear to all of you is this point clear to all of you very very important if there is high level of citrate in the cytoplasm this means that the cell is in energy rich state and it is planning to go for fatty acid synthesis okay so this citrate is converted into acetyl coa and oxaloacetate i'll tell you the importance of this when we are talking about the regulation of fatty acid synthesis now the second step this acetyl coa has to be charged so if you see this acetyl coa is a two carbon molecule this is the first carbon this is the third carbon second carbon and this third carbon is added here it is added here and it gets converted into malonyl coa the enzyme is acetyl coa carboxylase carboxylase are those enzymes which will add a carbon okay and carboxylase require you know biotin for their function okay they require biotin for their function is this clear and atp will be required in this step okay now remember if you see i have seen this new carbon here as the third carbon because this is the carbon which will be removed as carbon dioxide in the next step so ultimately it is the original two carbons of the acetyl coa which will go into the fatty acid fatty acid this carbon is just used to energize this acetyl coa remember this very very important concept remember this original two acetyl coa is the, what is going to be in fatty acid synthesis we are going to see that this third carbon the only purpose of this third carbon is to activate or energize this acetyl coa once it is activated in the form of malonyl coa once it goes into the fatty acid synthase complex this carbon dioxide will be this carbon will be removed as carbon dioxide okay and this step is the rate limiting step the importance of this rate limiting step is 
the fatty acid synthesis will be controlled by this step we are going to see this is this clear the second step is it clear to all of you any doubt any doubt in the second step this is the rate limiting step one of the most important step okay now let's look at the fatty acid synthesis complex now before i take you to this fatty acid synthesis complex let me tell you what are the structural changes which happens because if you understand the structural changes you will know the enzymes like this so let's look at so this is our acetyl coa molecule and for to become a fatty acid it has to be converted into c single carbon c because what is carbon dioxide what is fatty fatty acid a carbon chain with cwh at the end okay so we have to convert this particular structure into this particular structure so how does it happen so the first step is addition of hydrogen so what happens when you add hydrogen to this this will become c c and here oh will become it will become oh right the second step is when you remove water if you remove water what will happen this oh and one hydrogen from here will be removed as water and it will become c double bond c okay so the first step is reduction the second step is dehydration okay very simple and the third step if you have to convert this into this you will again add hydrogen so the third step again is reduction is this clear and this is the three steps which will keep on going and going and going is this clear to all of you what are the structural changes which are going to happen if you understand it you will understand the fatty acid synthase complex very easily is this clear so there is a reduction that is addition of hydrogen then you remove water and then again you add hydrogen okay so let's look at the fatty acid synthase first thing is it is a homodimer what is homodimer which means all the enzymes are present in two copies all the enzymes are present in two copies let's look at the enzymes now if you see this acp when we are going to see this this entire fatty acid will keep on moving here and here in lot of places all that movement is by this acp acyl carrier protein acyl carrier protein we are going to see that the complex we are going to see will move from one enzyme to other one enzyme to other so that movement is by acyl carrier protein let's look at the function of thiosterase all i have taught you is c single bond c formation at the last step when the desired amount of carbon is formed this last carbon will be converted into cwh that is the function of this thioesterase thioesterase acts only once once the let's say you want to form a 16 carbon so 16 carbon once it is added the last carbon will be oxidized to cwh and released out so that is the function of your thioesterase any doubt now let's look at this so this is the acceptor or both malonyl or acetyl okay and here it will come and where that extra carbon which was added is removed and it will be condensation here okay now remember there were two reductases okay one is ketoacyl and one enoyl reductase and one hydratase hydratase can both remove water as well as add water so these are the three enzymes which will keep acting ketoacyl enoyl and hydratase is this clear all of you now let's look at the steps so if what happens first time acetyl coa comes here and it is simply transferred to here okay so what we have is here is c this one okay for the first cycle malonyl comes here and carbon dioxide is removed and this acetyl coa combines this so now we have is a four carbon c double bond o c double bond o four carbon okay is this clear because this additional carbon was removed as carbon dioxide okay now this will be taken here this will be first reduction happens so reduction what will happen imagine c double bond o c double bond o this was the structure once hydrogen is added it will become c oh c oh right now it is taken to hydratase this step so what water will be removed so this c oh c oh from both these water will be removed and it will be converted to c double bond c single bond c double bond c and then again this will be brought to here in oil reductase and here it will become c c c c once the hydrogen is added all the single bond and this will come and wait here so here now you have what is c c c c four single chain and then again the next this is happening and the next again malonyl coa will come here now so this malonyl coa again will remove the third and now you have got c c c c four carbon here first cycle four carbon was added now c c double bond o 
and again the same cycle first reduction what removal of water again reduction again coming back here so this is how so in first cycle four carbon was added then every cycle two carbon will be added okay and once you desired let's say you want to form a 16 carbon a so once 16 carbon is formed this thioesterase will add a cwh and you know remove it is this clear is this clear all of you any doubt okay so a very frequent question is if a 16 carbon fatty acid is formed how many cycles are required can anyone answer this question for formation of a 16 carbon fatty acid how many cycles are required anyone for a formation of 16 carbon fatty acid how many cycles are required anyone so the formula for this is n by 2 minus 1 so 16 by 2 minus 1 so this is 7 is it clear all of you is it clear so seven cycles are required to form a 16 so the same question if they ask you how many cycles are required for 18 carbon cycle so 18 by 2 minus 1 so eight cycles is this clear excellent excellent very good very good now we will look at the regulation so you have understood the fatty acid synthesis okay okay now let's look at the regulation now the enzyme which was important the was acetyl oa carboxylase this was the major enzyme remember now this enzyme is existing in two forms in phosphorylated form or in dephosphorylated form suppose it is in phosphorylated form and dephosphorylated form so which form it will be active can anyone tell me will it be active in the dephosphorylated form or will it be active in the phosphorylated form anyone now remember phosphorylation is guided by glucagon which is a hormone of fasting state okay and dephosphorylation is guided by insulin and it is a hormone of fed state so obviously fatty acid synthesis will happen in fed state only so this acetyl coa carboxylase will be active in dephosphorylated state okay and remember so it will be inactive in phosphorylated this is called as covalent modification so this enzyme if glucagon is there will be phosphorylated it will become inactive if the enzyme if it insulin is there if the body is in fed state it will be dephosphorylated it will be active now covalent modification very important either the enzyme will be 100 percent active or zero percent active is this clear all of you excellent very good is it clear either the enzyme will be completely active or completely deactive okay there is nothing that it is working at a greater efficiency lesser efficiency now comes the second so let's say there is insulin but how much fatty acid synthesis will happen this is decided by allosteric regulation allosteric regulation now allosteric regulation is basically here either the enzyme is working at 120 percent efficiency or the enzyme is working at 80 percent efficiency which means the activity is either increased or decreased in covalent modification what was happening either it is working 100 percent or zero but with allosteric regulation either the enzyme activity is increased or decreased so how do you decide so i have told you remember at the start citrate citrate level is a very very strong indicator that cell is in the energy rest state so citrate will be an allosteric activator of this enzyme allosteric activator so if citrate high amount of citrate is there this acetyl coa carboxylase will be more active okay and what is the inhibitor palmitoyl coa palmitoyl coa palmitoyl coa is formed it is the end product of fatty acid synthesis so end product of fatty acid synthesis act as an inhibitor so this is allosteric inhibition so let's talk about allosteric inhibition first either it can be positive allosteric or you know a positive allosteric is basically by the citrate concentration okay and citrate concentration increases when acetyl coa and atp are independent okay and a negative inhibitor is by long chain acyl coa because it acts the it inhibits the inhibitor okay so this is allosteric and when we talk about covalent it is phosphorylation dephosphorylation and i have told you all have said that phosphorylation will deactivate it dephosphorylation will activate it and this is the a so this is our enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase it is active in the dephosphorylated state inactive in the phosphorylated state and once it is active the citrate can increase the activity and palmitoyl coa can decrease the activity 
so this is about fatty acid regulation is it clear all of you any doubt okay so this brings us to the end of session i have tried to cover the entire fatty acid synthesis you know with these 3a and again there will be a session tomorrow at 9 30 so please you know make sure that you have subscribed hit the bell icon and you know subscribe there's a youtube there's a telegram channel which i have started that is t.me and you can go for dr abhishek 10 that is my telegram channel i've started because many students were requesting so i've started it's still i will post the updates only there i'll try to post updates only there so you can search telegram for dr abhishek 10 you will find my profile photo you can and most of these notes or pdf version of these lectures which i'm giving will be there in your game for example this lectures pdf notes also will be there so dr abhishek Tain, you can have go and have a look at it thank you all thank you so much and it was a wonderful session there was so much of activity achkan vaseem dilma prateek rohan uh, anil was there tina was there sweta parth milap kennedy okay so mitali was there great so it was very good ramesh was there akshaya was there meg was there so so good interaction basit came up thank you so much take care take care bye and hope to meet you again tomorrow for a free session on youtube take care bye